You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you very much for joining us for this episode 894. We really, really appreciate it. Appreciate the questions. Appreciate you guys being with us for all of these episodes. It means a lot. It does mean a lot. It means a lot to us. You guys are asking some great questions too. You're leaving great reviews. We read one yesterday. Thank you so much for that. If you have a chance, 30 seconds, like right now. Leave us a review. You listen on Spotify, listen on iTunes, through podcast app, through Stitcher. Well, if you listen through iTunes, we've got about 240, 230 reviews. Stitcher, we don't have very many. And Spotify, I don't know because I haven't been able to check Spotify. But if you do leave us a review, just know that it really means a lot to us. So thank you. Today's question I think is going to be really interesting because we're talking about mapping water. Can you do reverse volumetric measurements? and so much more. There's gonna be some concepts in here that we're gonna talk about that are gonna be important for other types of mapping. So just kinda, kinda you listen in here for you mapping mindsets out there. Again, I could just see PJ in the background. Do you remember that one time you said you were never gonna get into drone mapping <laughs> on the podcast? <laughs> I do, I remember that. It's hilarious. Thanks PJ. He's never gonna let you forget it either. Oh no, he told me on last Friday in Denver. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Hey Paul, hey Rob, Cam from New Jersey again. I had a question about photogrammetry or basically volumetric uh, analysis. Uh, if I was doing some kind of real estate work where I was doing a model of a property and I was also taking some measurements uh, using the model, what if there was a pool in the backyard and I wanted to get the volume of the pool? Is that going to be an issue? I mean, I've seen things online where you can obviously get a, a volume of a excavation um, versus a pile, but with a pool and if there's any water in it, is the refraction of the water going to affect the point in such a way that when the software tries to tie it all together to create a 3D map of the pool, will it kind of be skewed enough where the, the volume would have a, too big of an error really to be accurate? That's kind of just the, the gist of my question. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. I, I, he just asks um, some great questions. So I know you've checked on this and kind of double checked. Well, if you remember when we went over the question in our walk this morning, I was like, I'm pretty sure the water has to be still and it has to be clear. Mm -hmm. And then I texted my my drone Gandhi friend and uh, <laughs> just made sure that I was correct. And he was like, yeah. And here's one more thing. So Let's say you want to get the volume of a pool. Maybe you want to fill up a pool. You don't like the pool anymore. You are sick and tired of paying those super high expenses on that pool, and your daughters never clean that damn thing, right? You're sick of it. You're going to fill that effort. Well, I've had those thoughts with I, our pool. I kind of was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Many a time. <laughs> All right, so can we actually get volumetric measurements from the pool? The answer is yes. If you're running PIX40, you're going to have to run steps one, two, and three to get the volume measurement or index calculator active. On top of that, you are going to need GCPs for this. Probably going to need five, maybe even two checkpoints so we can check the accuracy of the map in itself. But that being said, um, there's a couple things. Yes, the water needs to be very clear. It cannot be murky water. Murky water, we're not going to get data. Number two, the water has to be still. So if you're mapping in a 10 mile an hour wind, you got lots of ripples over the water, forget about it, okay? Number three, straight from Drone Gandhi himself, you need to throw in some poker chips into the bottom of the pool. Something like, you know, in my class and, you know, in a lot of other classes, talk about what is a key point? What is a tie point? A key point is a unique point in the image that the software finds. A tie point is three key points. So by throwing in the chips, we have more key points and more tie points for the software to actually utilize those photos to understand the triangulation between the photos and also have a better understanding of how to stitch the photos together. Hmm. I know some people don't like the idea of using the word stitch. I don't care. So, <laughs> so is it a situation where the more poker chips, the better, or is there a diminishing return? If you diminishing put, return, for sure. I mean, obviously, if you just fill the bottom of the pool, you've 
kind of negated the idea of getting the volume of the pool. Exactly. So um, I would say probably twenty or thirty chips is probably gonna be good. Obviously, equal, spread them around. Equal separation between them is good. Look, you want to give your kid a fun project to do. Tell him to go dive into the pool and put a poker chip every two feet. You know, so or every foot and a half. And we talk about GCP separation and how to lay GCPs out. And this is not a GCP, but we are essentially using key points and tie points to help the software create the point cloud. We could do manual tie points inside of the pool to help the ellipsis error and also to help create better points, which are not really GCPs, but they do kind of act in the same kind of manner, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So cool. So very doable. Totally very doable, but again, um, and you know, the whole the whole poker chips in the pool is kind of like if you're mapping stockpiles and you're mapping something that's very glossy, um, and so if you have that, like Cole, you know, another famous hmm. Drone Gandhi saying is take a paintball gun to the coal pile and just shoot the coal pile. That way we have more tie points to essentially have the software give us better data. Very interesting. So, but I want to clarify something because... I got the sense from Drone Conti. <laughs> I just can't help but laugh every time I I'm say sorry, that. I'm sorry, Angan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I laugh. I'm I, not sorry, though, because I, I know you secretly love it. I know he doesn't like it. <laughs> I think he I loves don't know. it. I don't know about that. He seems... Look, as in his last interview, he's like, don't. Call me Drone Gandhi, and then he just erupts laughing. Right, okay. I mean, look, I'm not Fair trying enough. to be blasphemous, okay? I'm just trying I uh, yeah. I no. think you're the man, okay? Let's be real here. Yeah. Absolutely. He's, he's very good natured about it. But anyways, I got the sense that he said just kind of throw them in there randomly, but then you seem to suggest that you need to space them out equally. I think it would help to space them out equally. Um, and it's not that big of a deal in all honesty, but you know, like we talk about with GCP placement, you're supposed to have equal distances essentially between the GCPs. And this in my mind is no different. I think okay. it, it would help out. But it would it's, help. Not, it's not something that you need to be like going to the bottom of the pool and moving it five inches. With a ruler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting no, a I'm tape measure down that. there. No, okay. no. I'm just going to throw them out into the pool, like 20 or 30, and hope that they uh, don't, you know, gather together. And if they do, grab the pool stick and just yeah. kind of move them. Move them around. Yeah. Nothing. All right, it's cool. not like hyper science here. Right. Although it would be, you mentioned doing it with your kid and having them get in the pool with you and help you. That would actually be a pretty cool science experiment for them, I think. Oh, yeah. Also a good math problem. Yeah, exactly. Oh, gosh, you could spin that so many ways. <laughs> I'm sure all the kids are really excited about that. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> all the kids in California probably are everywhere else in the country. They're like, it's too cold. Yeah, that's true. Definitely here. Definitely. Well, awesome. guys, I think that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. And guys, thank you for the niche questions. I love them. I think they're fun. Uh, also, just thank you for all the reviews. It really does mean a lot for us. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you. If you could do us a favor, share the show with someone. You know, let someone know about it. We, we really appreciate that. That is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.